Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think we are ready to start. We are already late by some minutes, so we want to apologize for that. We're waiting for a few other people to join. Let me welcome you to the 17th uh, uh, webinar for the Water Resources Institute. Here we are focusing for today, we are focusing on access to water uh, resources data to enable us achieve water security. And for this webinar, we are privileged to welcome Mr. David Kataratambi, uh, who is a senior water officer in the Ministry of Water and Environment. And David has done a lot of work related to water resources data for informed decision making. And David will be giving us a presentation based on experiences as had within Uganda and the region. And after that, we shall have time for questions or comments. Uh, this webinar is organized by the Water Resources Institute of the Ministry of Water and Environment, and it is held on every fr last Friday of the month from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we want to call upon all of you, ladies and gentlemen, to come forward and share with other people on the work you are doing. And this is the only way we can contribute to the development of this country. So I want to request those who are interested in sharing with us the work you are doing, whether it is research, whether it is practice, own innovations, to reach out to the Water Resources Institute and book space so that you can share with us. As we always do, we want to request you to keep muted until we reach time for discussions so that we don't create any challenges with the presentation. But also you can post in the chat, put in your names and the contacts so that the Institute can reach out to you for subsequent uh, communications. But also you can put in the chat a question that you may have as the presentation is going on. So again, welcome and thank you for sparing time to come over. And on this note, maybe I should have introduced myself first. I'm called Dr. Kalisti Ndimugaya. I'm acting director, director of water resources management, and I also oversee the Water Resources Institute. And I want to thank the team at the Water Resources Institute, Gwendolyn Francis, and the rest of the team for coordinating this webinar. So let me invite Mr. David Katanatambi to take us through uh, this presentation. And then we shall come back when we reach time for questions. Over to you, David. David, are you ready to start? I don't hear you. I don't know whether others are hearing you. Francis, do you hear David? No, I'm not hearing Hello? him. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, David, yes, now we, we can hear, hear you. Give the floor. Yes, go ahead. Oh, yes. <clears throat> good morning, everyone, and good morning, moderator, for having given me this opportunity to present on this 17th webinar for the Water Resources Institute regarding the enhancement of water database and use for water. My name is David Kataratamba has been uh, mentioned by the moderator and uh, I have been in this field of, of, of data management and use for a very long time. And I have uh, been involved in very many operational activities for hydrology. So I'm very much pleased, you know, to to, sh to share uh, uh, my experience with you. And we all share knowledge and experiences and see how we can move this uh, 
water data access and use for water resource security forward. Francis, move on. Hello, Francis. Yes, David. Hello. Yes, David. Sorry, I have an instable internet connection. <clears throat> yeah. So here we go. I hope everyone is hearing me. I'm introducing the topic now. As you are well know, as you were all well know, uh, data is very critical in solving water security problems. And uh, understanding of this data of the past and the current and future situation is critical. Water security generally refers to the minimization of the following risks. Little water, much water, which is always is reflected through flooding, pollution, as we have all experienced in our different places, undermining the resilience of the fresh system. We have had some catchments, some areas running out of water. So this is also a danger as far as water resource, um, so as far as water security is concerned. So we could briefly say that water security is, uh, can be seen in four dimension, main dimensions. Uh, the problem of little water, the problem of too much water, and pollution and under undermining the resilience of fresh water systems. So having data regarding these four thematic areas is so crucial that uh, we, we, we have to understand how to generate, to process, to share, and use the data for development purposes. So knowledge, as you all well know, is a prerequisite for for any action, let it be flood mitigation, let it be adaptation, let it be anything, you know. So the knowledge and the knowledge is generated from data, as you know, and, and information. So <clears throat> we find that uh, accessing data and using it, of course, it becomes very crucial uh, and as far as water resources management is concerned. We cannot manage what Know and all what we, are, we don't understand. Next. Hello. Yes, we move on to the next uh, slide. The importance of water data for water security. We have already observed that security, water security concerns little water or too much water on one hand. And from our experiences, when you look at those areas, especially in Karamoja and other areas, we have had situations where uh, cattle have died because there is no pasture, there is no water to drink. We have also had ex experiences where crops have failed because there is no water and people go hungry. We have also seen situations where people uh, have a problem of too much water and flooding is causing problems. People are displaced and they have nowhere to, to live and sometimes they die, as you can see on the screen. So the water security situation, of course, is, 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 is a very serious.
David, we don't hear you. Are, are you having a problem with the... Francis? Oh, sorry, sorry. There was a connection problem. Sorry, 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 moderator. Uh, yeah, I could continue. Oh, yes, yes. I was talking about the drought conditions and the flood conditions that are part of the water security issue. Yeah, and I have been explaining how this drought has, for example, hit Karamojo on several occasions and hit farmers, as you can see on the screen, and the floods, how they have displaced people and maybe killed some of them. So these are the issues of water security, which must be addressed uh, through uh, use of right data and sharing it appropriately. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, the, the, the sharing of data is so crucial that uh, we need you know, to appreciate and understand how to go about the whole business of data sharing, data collection, uh, product generation. We, we need all this uh, range of acti activities within the data value chain so that we are able to solve the problems of water security. To the next slide. Hello. Oh, yes. Uh, so we are still on importance of data for water security. <clears throat> and here we go on the risk of pollution. We have had in many places, wastes being discharged in the river, natural river systems, contaminating the waters that would be for us to use. You have also seen places where there is a lot of uh, sediment load transport. And all these are the challenges that can be solved by use of uh, the right or the appropriate data that we can use to be able to solve this uh, water problem. So you can see how data sharing or data acquisition and uh, processing of the right information can be so crucial that we cannot just sit on and 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 not and not, and not to do nothing and not to do something to be able to solve these problems which are related to the security, to water security. Next slide, please. Yeah, so the, the, the problem of, of, of pollution as you can continue to see on our in, in, our, in our data security, sorry, in our water, our water security issues, sorry, can only be solved if we really understand and collect the right information, process it, and uh, communicate and generate products, and pass it on to the right policy makers or decision makers so that the right actions are taken. Next. Hello. Hello. Yes, David, we can hear you. But I don't see the presentation. Are you still projecting? Francis, are you the one projecting? Because yes. we don't see the presentation. Yeah, I had agreed that he presented from his side because of my unstable internet. So I think he has also got the problem, unfortunately. Sorry for, yeah. Sorry. Sorry for... We don't see the presentation. I see you are back. Apologies for the communication, black in communication. So we continue and uh, we look at the kind of data that we need to collect. What, what, what is this data that we need to collect as far as water resources management is, is concerned or water security is concerned? And we realize that we have essentially uh, four basic, so, sorry, three basic areas of data that we need 
for solving these water security problems. We have water quantity data, we have water quality data, and we have auxiliary data which would help in, 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 in force managing the water resources. So as you can see on, on the screen, we have many water bodies, lakes, we have river systems, we have uh, uh, man-made ponds. So you know, from all these water resource systems, we have to generate the right information for us to be able to, to get the right, uh, uh, the right data for decision making and producing the right information products that can be shared with the stakeholders or the public so that they appreciate uh, uh, the value of data and how it can be important in, in, in water security and uh, solving the problems, everyday problems related to water resources. So we have quite a number of things that we do. We measure the water levels, we collect uh, discharge measurements, we, we, we measure rainfall and we measure other, other parameters as far as uh, water security is concerned so that we are able to use this information for making the right uh, decisions and uh, making the right development uh, plans. So usually sometimes, you know, we, we have a challenge because we, we we didn't focus properly on, on, on what kind of information we needed to collect and how we could use it to generate the right products so that the people get to appreciate what, what this data or information is all about and what it can help us to, 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 to solve. So these are the things that we need to appreciate that before even you design a network or sorry, monitoring system, you, you need to have at the back of your mind what you are going to use the data and what is the final uh, product you are going to get out of this information or data you are going to collect. So that at the end of the day, you have uh, 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 the data you have collected is making value and is, is, is being reflected in, a, in, a, in in development plans and solving problem, practical problems. Uh, we can move to the next slide. Yeah, so... Uh, the next thing is normally to look at the, the, the data value chain and what this means is, is just a systematic way of doing things so that you, you ensure at the end of the day, you collect the right information, you collect quality information, and you produce the right products so that people are able to, or the public or the community or whoever they are, are able to appreciate uh, the, the, the outcome of this uh, information. So, so we have several steps that are called definition of the data that you have to, to, to collect. You must know what is this data that I'm going to collect and, uh, and how is it going to, to, to inform the decision. So that should be at the back of our minds before we even start collecting the data and defining where we should collect this data and produce the right product. So, so there is a need to link the measurement to the desired outcomes. At the, at the, just at the outset of going to collect this information, you need to see an outcome at the end of the day and what solution this information is going to uh, provide in, in, in a real world situation. So the data collection process, of course, is another step for, for the data value chain. And uh, this, of course, could have global information, national catchment, and uh, local information that you can have and put together to be able to uh, to, to, to use in water security. So the transmission process, of course, is about how the water, the, 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 the data moves from place to place or system to system, so that it makes everything easy for, 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 for managing the, uh, and accessing the information. The verification is another area where we, an important step where the quality of the data force is verified. And, and, and this is what really make people, you know, to have faith and belief in, the, in the, the, the quality of the data. So if this step is done properly, at the end of the day, should be able to have the information, uh, data products that can be uh, believed in, or people have faith in this information. And uh, at the end of the day, you, 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 you increase uh, appetite or, 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 or appetite for the information for the data anyway. 
So the data management, of course, is another process, part of the process where you have to think of how Apologies for the poor communication for connection. Sorry, once again. Yeah, so the other area is the data analysis. It's another part of the data value chain. And of course, this is a component of a highly specialized value chain uh, where you have to choose the analytical tools that you will have to use to be able to make this data to be in a more usable, uh, or more user-friendly uh, status. Then the last one, of course, is the reporting and the communication. And this is where you have to generate the information uh, products that will inform the public or will inform the decision makers so that they are able to appreciate the usefulness of the data. And, the, and this is an area also where sometimes uh, people or, or those concerned, they do not pay much attention because at the end of the day, if you didn't have if you don't have the, 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 the products to, to, to sell to the people out there or the decision makers and they see these products coming out and they are using them, then uh, of course they may have little appetite or, or taste for, or there would be good information that could be used in a, in a water security situation. So uh, at, at the end of it or at the end of the chain, you have to have uh, the good products and the products related to, to what you had initially started planning to collect so that uh, it informs uh, the, 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 the stakeholders that yes, there is a product and this product is being used in this and this way so, so, so that they see the value and uh, this in a way enhances uh, the, 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 the search or the, 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 the appetite for, for, for this information to be looked for and then be accessed in a way because there is interest in what this information is providing and, and there are fruits that can be appreciated. The next slide I see. So this is the whole thing about that value chain. Yeah. So then the other thing is uh, on uh, open data and standards. Yeah, you know, in some places you find uh, that getting the data is, is, is a nightmare in some places. Of course, not all, but uh, getting this information or data it becomes a problem. And, and, and of course, this has an impact on, on access and use of, of, of the water data, hence uh, hampering some, 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 hampering what? Water security uh, efforts. So uh, there, there, there is a need, there is a need for, for having in place major policies to enable the data sharing and information sharing uh, to be much easier so that at the end of the day, uh, you have more people, more customers, more policymakers having this information and using it to, to, to show results. Then this, in a way, is going to uh, enhance uh, data. It's going to enhance uh, the accessibility and the use of the data. So this will translate in enhancing uh, uh, water use, water security. So the other one is about using of appropriate standards. We have these ISO standards, we have WM standards, and we have other standards, of course, that we should use when we are collecting and analyzing and assessing this information. So that at the end of the day, we have a product that is of high quality and it can be uh, trusted and believed in uh, by everybody. So, uh, yes, uh, this is another area, of course, that would help enhancing the access and the utilization or use of the water data for water security purposes. Think next. Yeah, so uh, accessibility to that, accessing data and using the right standards in data management, data analysis, data collection, and information generation is, is something that really must be uh, 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 followed very strictly so that at the end of the day, we have the products that can be 
uh, believed in, can be trusted, can be it can be can it can be of high value really. Okay. Okay. So uh, to sum up, sum up, this has been a a short journey in discussing uh, how this data could be used. But uh, I would say uh, that uh, there is little awareness in the appreciation of the importance of use of data. And this, this has to come out very well so that uh, people are able to appreciate the value and the usefulness of data in decision making, in, in, in policy formulation, in, in all sorts of things as far as water resources is concerned. So this is very, very important. And uh, if that could be done, yes, uh, at the end of the day, you have things move. And you see problem, problems of water security being solved day by day. Uh, the, the data values chain, yes, I have said this before. Sometimes, you know, there are jumps and uh, it's not properly done. And then we end up getting maybe uh, unsatisfactory results. And then this could lead to uh, uh, poor access and poor, poor usability of this data. And then I also talked about the data sharing or open data sharing and the information products. If this can also be improved, yeah, I think you can have uh, uh, advancing, you can advance as far as the, the uh, data access and the sharing and the use is concerned. Then there is an issue of limited capacity to analyze use data for water security. In some places, sometimes you find the data, yes, has been collected, but it, it has not been put to much use. Yeah, because maybe some there is not enough capacity to analyze the data. There is not enough. Uh, uh, there are there are limited there are several limitations really for for analyzing this data and put it to the right usage. So that that is an area also of course which should be improved, and so that at the end of the day, the the, the data uh, data access and use is promoted for solving water security problems. Uh, then the other thing is uh, you need to improve data sharing policy, absolute data sharing policies that is, and financing. Yes, uh, in, in most areas, especially these less developed countries, we, we put less uh, emphasis on, on, on funding these operations. Maybe we see this as a waste of time, I don't know, but you know, this is the kind of feeling that perhaps maybe collection of data is not important, but, but it's time that it needs to be proved that actually this data is very important and it is used in, is useful in, a, in solving so many problems, if not all problems related to water security. So in that case, you will have uh, to, to you, there will be improvements, of course, if this direction is taken and we have a policy that is flexible enough to, 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 to allow more access, more use of these products. So this, in a way, will promote uh, faith and trust, by especially by the public and the other stakeholders in the in the data and 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 what the data is able of to do as far as water financing water security is concerned. So. Uh, Generally, that's what I can say for now. But of course, there is a host of other, other, other issues that we could focus on, or perhaps colleagues in the in the webinar could have experiences on or are aware of that could improve this data sharing and uh, data access and use, because we have seen that this is the foundation for most actions most decisions, most police action. So it's quite very important that we we have to we have to have the right things done so that we move to, we, we promote the water security uh, situation in our respective areas and countries and globally. So uh I think, colleagues, this is what I had to say for now. 
as far as data sharing, uh, sorry, as that enhancing data access and security is concerned. Data, sorry, data access and use. Yeah, so it's so critical that uh, we really need to, to, to think through it and see how we can put it to another level as far as uh, uh, water security is concerned. So I wish to thank you for having me listen to me and uh, I will welcome comments, advice and experiences from you. Thank you. Over to you, the moderator. Uh, thank you, David, for this uh, presentation. I'm going to request Gwendolyn to moderate this session. Gwendolyn, I don't know that you're already there. You and France, you are going to moderate. So ladies and gentlemen, yes, sir, you have yeah. had a presentation. Yes, sir, we are here. So, yes, so we are now going into question and answer. People can speak out, people can post in the chat and David will be able to respond, but all the other colleagues online can also respond. So going to turn over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, David. Thank you for the presentation. Now that we have finished the conclusion, I think I will uh, open that the floor for questions, comments, additions from uh, participants. Please go ahead, raise your hand, and then I will call on you. We we'll raise your question, and then David, the presenter, will be able to answer it or be able to supplement what you've raised. Back to you, the, uh, the audience. We can take three questions at a time. Then uh, David will be able to answer. All other people on the on the on the on online will be able to supplement and answer. And then we take more three three questions. We still have some time. We have a lot of time to we'll do go through this. Members, free, to, free free. If you cannot talk, you can send your also your your comments on the chat. Let me check the chat. Let me see. Okay. Not seeing anybody asking question. Does it mean everything was clear or you didn't understand everything? You didn't understand any. Members. Hello, Gwendolyn. Yes, please. Go ahead. Um, yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much, David, for your insightful presentation um on the data value chain and so your conclusion resonates really deeply on the multi multifaceted challenges uh, we face um in this critical domain and as i reflect um uh, on your discussion i'm really struck um by the intricate web of limitations um that hinder our progress uh, to data accessibility. So, and there is uh, this ongoing quest uh, to leverage um, data uh, for robust uh, water resource management. Um, but at the same time, we encounter, you know, a cascade of obstacles that begin with identifying and assessing, you know, the right people to work with within government agencies. And this fundamental issue really impedes our ability to initiate uh, meaningful discussions, right? At the decision-making level. And moreover, um, um, many entities are really reluctant to share this valuable resource. And often, and oftentimes data is accessible only 
uh, through insider networks, right? And of course, this exclusivity limits, you know, the broader impact uh, data could have in trying to resolve the many pressing challenges, right, that you mentioned about water, water security. Um, but then again, even when we kind of are able to access this data, there are also further layers of complexity, right? You really mentioned, you know, about the idea of cleaning your data, but we do not have, I think, the computational resources necessary to do the data processing, right? Because you want to use this data uh, uh, to communicate something, to say something about um, a given, you know, um, about a given uh, phenomena, right? Environmental phenomena. And this sh shortage of data analytical skills, right, kind of exacerbates the issue. And it really highlights um, the limited expertise we do have in terms of, you know, the digital research methodologies. And definitely, as I mentioned, right, there's access or limited access to the appropriate software and processing power, right? So with these complexities in mind, my question to you is, how do you think we can develop a coherent strategy that not only addresses these so many limitations, but also fosters an environment where data accessibility and utilization are prioritized across all levels from the grassroots, right, to the government policy level, thereby I think ensuring that there is value for improved data access, you know, we can be able to recognize that. And specifically, uh, what do you think, what role do you think can help interdisciplinary uh, collaboration, you know, in term, even if you think about, you know, policy reform, technology innovation, how do you think this can help in overcoming these entrenched barriers uh, to create a more inclusive and more effective data ecosystem for water resource management? Thank you, Isaac. Thank you for that. I hope uh, David, you are taking the notes, but there are still other questions in the chat. Uh, if you can read the chat, if you can access the chat, David, one of the questions is awareness and appreciation of the data for decision makers or for the public makers. Then another question is, how have you integrated this data with other public infrastructure planning, development and management that aren't directly under the water sector, but have overbearing consequences on water resources, if you know what? Those are some questions. I think the number of questions, another, another one from Anthony. Thank you for the presentation, engineer. One area that we seem to not pay attention to is water data management in emergencies. We have had the refugees response for a long time, but the management of data, of wash related data specifically, water supply is wanting. It is quite hard to obtain available data in line with the quantity, quality, and aquifer performance for the development of water sources. What plans has Minister of Water and Environment got collect this? Another one. Apart from data sharing, there is another issue of data interoperationability. I think something like that. Sometimes you get the data from source A, but you can't use it because of how it is structured. Then another one from Benjamin. There has been a challenge in the feedback mechanism for the data analyzed, yet this information would influence some societal changes. How can we improve this? David, Carol, we can wait for some time and let David answer these questions and then we can come to you back. We can come to you, Carol. David, please. Okay, thank you, moderator. I, I have seen the uh, number of questions, but uh, they are kind of related in a way. 
Yeah, I will begin with uh, the first one. It was talking about um, about uh, how to do things better. I think if I, I summarized it well, uh, we talked about problems of data uh, processing, uh, then limitations shared when sharing data, technological problems or analysis challenges. Yeah, all this I think were mentioned in uh, the presentation, though may may not have gone much deeper into the the the, 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 the core of the matter. But uh, there are quite a number of things that, that that has to be done. And of course, something has been done already, but uh, I think what we need is improvements uh, in the collection of data, understanding the right data that we have to collect and for what. That, that those are the things you have to ask yourself. So that at the end of the day, when you collect this information, you already know uh, the, the, the solution it is going to provide. And then you also have to have in place the right uh, enabling environment in terms of policies, in terms of, of, of guidelines, in terms of, 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 of standards to follow, so that at the end of the day, you are able to produce the right product. And then you should also have the right technological, technological uh, or, or the right tools to be able to process and get the right information that you need for, 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 for decision making or for whatever purposes you use it. So uh, what is needed here is, uh, is uh, and, and I think I would have to combine something because I see they are kind of connected uh, to <clears throat> strengthen our, our, our systems. And, and of course, this is going to take time and some improvement, I can tell you that some improvements are being made, but uh, I, I believe at some point, uh, 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 the right the right position will be reached and the right information will, will be what will be generated for decision making so what we need to do is to improve the capacity in terms of the skill of the people to be able to do these things and do them right then the other one is to have the right policies and guidelines that helps people i mean that help that 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 influence that enables these things to be done very well and then the technology and uh, and uh, the right tools to use, of course, this there is no question about this. This will help in coming up with the right information for the right uh, decision making. Yeah, that was for the first one. So I, I would say it's about improving the way we do things, improving coordination, for example, among us, uh, different uh, uh, um, MDAs and uh, institutions. So that we we, 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 we we there is a lot of collaboration and coordination so that we know how what how the relevance of this information and what can do and what problems you can solve. So once once uh, people are aware of these things and they, they benefit, it's like you kind of having a product that you say once somebody knows that you have a, a product that is that is useful, they will always come, they will always support you, or they will even be part of you because they know you have a product that can solve uh, a problem. So and and then and the whole thing in life is about solving problem. If you can prove you can solve a problem, be sure you always have the support you need. So the capacity, technical capacity, improvement of policy frameworks for doing doing these things, and then improving coordination. Uh, I think this can go a long way to to solve most of these problems, and then. We are currently developing what we call a water and environmental information system. And I think this one also be an avenue for integration, uh, of, of, of integration and more increased cooperation and understanding of the relevance of this, uh, uh, of this water data information and how what it can do in solving problems, societal problems. I don't know, maybe that is for the first one. And then there was another one uh, concerning raising awareness, I think. If I'm, if I'm um, uh, raising awareness for decision makers. Yeah. yeah yes, please. There was awareness. Yes, please. Yes, yeah. Raising it's awareness. Actually, I think, yeah, I think also this is uh, uh, still a gap, but it is being handled. But once you have the right information and you can give it to 
to to to to the, the decision makers and you can prove to them that this is a, this this is a fact and they see they are facts uh, yes the right decision will be made and the right support will be provided so that awareness is very important and i, I think uh, it's being done though still on a small scale but i i believe sooner or later uh, it will be scaled up and uh, the right uh, the right things will be done the other one was on that accessibility if i remember yeah accessibility yeah, it's more or less connected with the other one i had already talked about having the right policies have having the right tools to be able to help uh to to, to improve the, the the accessibility and and by the way this one is also connected to awareness raising you see the moment you you make people aware that you have a product or you have things that can solve a problem you will always have that interaction and accessibility would be would be what would be promoted okay then another one was on data, I think interoperability. This is where you have the data that cannot be uh, shared on a system because there is a difference in, in, in interface of software or, 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 or a way things are being done or, or the way the standards of standards are not, are not compatible. And I think I also mentioned about the standards. So you, you should have that uniformity. If you don't have it, then there are mechanisms for, for ensuring that uh, this interoperability or exchange of data is easy from one 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 maybe institution or one place to another so that we enhance access to data so it can also be a limitation if there is an interoperability problem that system cannot communicate because i mean there is some incompatibility issues so that that i think is also going to be addressed and once it is addressed, then communication between the different institutions becomes easy and sharing data no longer becomes a problem. So because of that restriction of, of, of incompatibilities. Yeah, the, the last one I think I was about, I'm sorry, I think I missed uh, one small letter, but it was all about making improvements in the way things are done. And I, as mm -hmm. I mentioned, the, as I, I mentioned before, it's all about improving the, the, the understanding and the awareness of the, the usefulness of this information or data and what it can do. Hmm? So kind of like in marketing or awareness creation so that people know the value and then at the end of the day, you, you will see things changing. So th this is the whole idea really of making improvements and bringing everybody on board. You can, inter you can for example, deal with, like we are, for example, dealing with the customer management. We introduce in this data of data collection and we show the relevancy and what it can do, even to the local communities. And they appreciate that we, we, we need this data and for this purpose, we can use it to do this. So they will even be part of the data collection process. And then they come. Yeah, so they, can, they, they kind of come to appreciate the relevancy and then improvements will be realized. So that's what I can say. There are just a few areas that need to be improved. And once people are aware of these, 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 these products, are, are aware of the importance of this information and the power it has to change things, I can assure you, I mean, we can move really and, and, and do things better. That's what I had to say, yeah. moderator. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And Thank you, you David. Others. Yes, yes. Okay, the other question is, Carlo, 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 can you? Uh, um, Carlo, please go ahead and ask your question. Okay, thank you, David, for the presentation. Uh, I think you've alluded to most of the issues I had uh, noted down. One was on the data packaging. Um, we seem to have different users of this data but most of the times our data is very technical and it's not packaged to suit the different users. So I'm wondering how best we can put this information in such a way that it's, it's available to the different users, right from the communities to the policymakers. Uh, secondly, was on the issue of data harmonization. We are different institutions with different mandates, collecting different types of data in different formats. So for us to be able to put this information together, for example, water quality is collecting data on water quality. I have data on wetlands, uh, which are degraded or intact. 
how best can we harmonize our data so that it speaks to each other and it's able to inform uh, the decisions that we make. Then lastly is on the, um, the data concentration in certain areas. Uh, we realize that our networks do not cover every part of the country. We have certain areas where we have a lot of data and then we have certain areas where data is very scanty. How best can we improve our networks so that we have data that speaks uh, comprehensively about the water situation in the entire country? Thank you. Thank you, Carol. There are so many the other questions that came in. As, okay, as, uh, okay you, if you look at the yeah, chat, me... you start yeah. with Frank Chizito. There's one did, afterwards was Frank Chizito, Wilfred Okello, then Isaac again. I think these are the two. These are the three. You can look at them before you can. Maybe let me read for everybody to hear. The collection of reliable water resources data at various levels of granularity is highly dependent on existence of appropriate sensor systems and technologies. In your experience, how are we doing as a country with regard to establishment and maintenance of real-time sensor networks and technologies? And is this something we can sustain as a public sector without necessarily relying on one of donor-funded projects or private sector initiatives? Then one from Wilfred, Thank you, David, for this important presentation. I strongly agree with you with the rapid changes of exacerbated by climate change, the need for increased frequency of data collection analysis and sharing. There's a need, actually, I think. There is a need, uh, you said the need. There's a need for that. Thank you, this one is just a supplement. Thank you. Then uh, the one from Isaac again. Do you think there is, do you think there will be, do you think there will come a time when a public will have access to a comprehensive catalog to explore info on water resources, land use, etc.? Then I'm Wilfred again, how can we utilize AI to avoid data management? You, David. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so, okay, let me begin with, uh, with uh, quite a number, but let me look at the, uh, at the Carol. Okay, I'll go backwards. Yeah, Carol has talked about the different packages of data, uh, uh, the, the packaging of data uh, for different users. Yes, uh, sure, yes, here you have to package to, to, to get a product to, 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 to to, to, to appetize the, the consumer. So you have to package the, the information in a way that uh, somebody will understand. And, and you have to understand your, your what you are, you are using. If they are policy makers, of course, you have to have kind of summarized information, not complicated data, technical data, that will tell somebody, yes, this is a polluted uh, water system. This is a highly segmented system, things like that. So information that somebody can easily digest if say he's a, a, a policy maker and he makes a decision there and then. Now, for if the technical person, you will definitely talk the technical language and you package the information in a technical manner. And for the the, 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 the local community, again, you want them maybe give them signs of um, information that is related to uh, the likely the consequences of, 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 the, of, of, the, of, of what, of, from the observation you have made and, and then, they, they will appreciate that information. So the packaging must be tailored to the needs of the what? of the of the users. Now, yeah, yeah. How can we put the different information together? Okay, you are talking of uh, information from the from the what I'm, for example, from the different departments. They, this information complement each other, and of course, here you have to use the right tool like modeling tools that will help put this information together. And again, this is where you have to build the capacity and the skills so that you have the people who can use maybe GIS, GIS tools, maybe who can use other modeling tools that can combine this information together to be able to inform. Yeah, so you, you have to you have the right tools here. This can be acquired and then all developed so that you are able to integrate the information to get uh, 
and inform the decision. See, for example, how the degradation is affecting uh, water uh, quality or how it is affecting the water quantity. So that information has to be put together and we see the impact of one or the other. Then you have talked of having many stations in one place and uh, and and sometimes maybe others are not optimized. So I do think I mentioned this before. I, I said before you, you 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 do any data collection, you have to define define what you have to collect and and what you have to collect should be good enough to inform uh, to, to, pro, to generate a product. So you look for areas where there are issues. And the issues we know, I, we mentioned them, we have quality problems, we have a little water, we have uh, too much flooding, we have uh, maybe there is overuse or misuse of the water in the place that's a degradation of the ecosystem. So you, you, you will identify those places and then depending on which issues you are going to solve, then you optimize your monitoring or data collection in that line by identifying issues, so issue based. So that's how the monitoring should be or the collection of the data. What are you going to solve? What problems are you going to solve? And where are they? If you know where they are, then that's where you should collect the data. And you perhaps maybe it can also be from other areas or transboundary nature. Still, you have to look around and see where the problems could be originating. And then you, 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 you make your monitoring system on, on that line, basing on what problems are there and what am I going to solve. So you optimize your network based on the issues that you are going to, to address. Then to another one was, was uh, I think to do collection of data in real time. Yes, he was talking about sustainability, I think. So that's why they try to get in. Yes, we have challenges of these water level sensors and uh, and uh, sometimes you pick the, uh, the stations are vandalized and sometimes many things happen. But of course, here again, you need to have many things done. You need to have uh, the right people to understand how to, 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 to maintain and operate this system. You know, it, failing you can also be as a result of not, no, no poor maintenance and, and maybe poor management and poor handling of the equipment and not knowing what to do exactly. So that's one thing. Then the other one is you can you can involve stakeholders like 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 we have people who use water and by law we actually supposed to request them to operate and run some some water monitoring stations for example so them as investors as a private sector they can support not that the government is the one going to do all these things but the private sector can also come in and provide maybe storage station and then we work hand in hand. They run it, and, but the data of course we shall be uh, sharing it and making sure that they follow the right standards. And we also ensure that they are doing it the right way. We provide the technical support where needed be. So we work with stakeholders like, uh, the, like hydropower developers, for example, uh, those who are doing irrigation schemes. So if you work with them, you may realize some level of, of, of sustainability because they will support your efforts in the data collection. So that is one line that one could could do, could do, could do, could do, could, 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 could follow to make sure that there is sustainability. Then the other one is of course making sure that you prove value. You you, you show the, the the value of the of the of the of the data. If you show this and people appreciate that, yes, this thing is produced uh, results. You can urge you, and you can find even the government actually picking a lot of interest and providing the support, increasing the support. So you look at the at many directions. You look at the private sector, work with them as stakeholders. Then you can also provide uh, support in this line of, 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 of data collection and monitoring and assessment, of course, you can work hand in hand and then we get what we need at the end of the day. So it's all about collaboration with stakeholders, with the policymakers and everybody. So at the end of the day, we get what we want. Then uh, when I think this was a supplement you talked about uh, frequency of collection of the information. Yes, this is, this is important because, you know, the situation is becoming very complicated. We are getting more floods, more and, more and then the, the drought could come, the pollution is becoming is everywhere. So we, we need to, 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 to collect more of this information and analyze it and get the right information that we need for the right decisions to be made and the actions to be taken. 
Isaac, then he said, do you think he will reach a rabbi think of, of, of free data access, I think? Uh, I think, yes. In some countries, actually, those countries of the US, I think they have uh, open access to data. They, 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 so I believe if we also take these things seriously as a country or as a whatever we are, we there a time will come when uh, we realize that these things are so crucial that we cannot just ignore them and they are very important in every decision so we we we, we may have no choice but to say appreciate that everybody must understand and uh, and this is the information for action because we need that information for action and for decision making so we we it should it should not be difficult to get it should be available and 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 should be the right information. So I believe, yes, this information at some point in the time could, could be could be easily accessed. And then I think it could make things better or much better than we are now. Thank you, moderator. That's what I have to say, uh, respond, sorry. Thank you, David. More questions? Thank you, David, for the presentation. I'll wait for more questions. There's one, one, one from, okay, this one. One from Masi. I recommend that we increase awareness on data sharing policies among stakeholders in the water sector programs. This will improve timely access, usage, and management. I think this is just a recommendation. Thank you, Masi. More questions, those who are now online, you can raise your hand and then I will be given an audience to answer, to pose your question or put us a, or a supplement to the presentation and, and to our, our presenter. Hello, moderator. Yes, please. Uh, my hand is up. I think you must have missed it. Eh? Let me see. Why doesn't it highlight it? Anyway, I can just go straight okay, to- Can you, you my... just go, go straight? Go to answer, uh, to say, to okay. pose your question. Uh, mm. Thank you so much. My name is uh, Anthony Anwar. I work for a project called uh, SACRIAC. SACRIAC is uh, strengthening adaptive capacity and resilience of communities in Uganda's watersheds, particularly uh, our water catchment. Uh, and uh, knowledge management, one of the key outputs for this project is a uh, development of guidelines for water resources information management. And I think this uh, uh, will greatly help to uh, address most of the challenges in uh, data management. And uh, it, it highly relates to the questions that uh, most people have been asking in the, this webinar. Um, so for us, what uh, we need is uh, basically to find out whether there are already guidelines in place. And uh, if they're already in place, we do not need to reinvent the wheel, uh, basically just to improve on these guidelines and uh, yeah, to address these challenges. Another thing that is uh, critical for us is to, uh, to get guidance on uh, the key stakeholders uh, that should be consulted in this process. So that uh, when the time comes for us uh, to take on this activity, we know which are the, who are the key stakeholders in uh, data management, which can greatly support our activity. Uh, thank you. Hello. Go ahead and can oh, I have yes. Maximo? I said, can uh, can I have Maximo? And after Maximo, we shall have Professor Komakech to also uh, contribute or raise the question. Maximo. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, moderator. I'm engineer Maximo Tinomaji, a team leader for Chonga Water Management Zone in the Ministry of Water and Environment. So I just wanted to make a contribution on what was raised, especially from Isaac regarding public access to a comprehensive catalog to explore information. I just wanted to add to 
uh, what David said. And by the way, thank you for your presentation. Uh, to say that as Minister of Water and Environment in Uganda, we, we are taking a good direction, like uh, David said, where we have in place the Water and Environment Information System, a platform uh, through which we believe that uh, we will uh, contribute and enhance this uh, comprehensive catalog to explore information on water and environmental resources uh, management. And also this is related to what Carol said earlier on data harmonization uh, for different stakeholders, where there's data in different formats from water resources, environmental management, wetland management. So the water and information, the water and environment information system is again a platform that brings uh, stakeholders to discuss issues of data harmonization and sharing. That, for instance, if if you have uh, data that has been processed and uh, entered in the uh, in the water and environment information system, a minister can just click a button and see the current water levels. For instance, the water levels for Lake Victoria today as it goes to cabinet and uh, makes the deliberation and the decision in the cabinet. But to bring that data to that information level where a minister can get the, uh, the water level of the day, then you need capacity at different levels uh, to collect the data, to build the water and environment information system, to analyze it, to bring it to the level uh, of, of a popular version for different uh, uh, decision-making needs. So I just wanted to make that contribution uh, just to emphasize the point uh, David was making. And again, when we have these uh, information systems in place, it also touches what Anthony is also raising about, is what, what he's talking about in terms of the guidelines for information management, where we recognize that different stakeholders are collecting different data sets in project implementation and we want to archive these and uh, use them as uh, learning lessons uh, for uh, further projects. Thank you, moderator. Thank you. Thank you, Maximo. Can we now go to... Uh, Maximo was supplementing to Katara Chambi's uh, presentation and also answering some of the questions that were posed earlier on. Then thank you, Maximo. Thank you. Before I call Professor Kumakech, uh, let me read one of the posts that have been sent onto the chat. What is stopping us to appreciate that it is now the time to have open source water resources data? That's the question that was sent by Thomas Isanga. Please, Hannes, the, the floor is yours. Yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Gwendolyn. And uh, David, uh, thanks for a very nice talk. And uh, I know that my interest uh, or question I wanted to raise were partly covered by the thing that uh, Gwendolyn has just raised and also the water and environment information systems. My only uh, point that possibly I will want to raise is uh, how do do we see emerging technologies like machine learning, AI going to play a role? Uh, I know we, in most of this uh, talk here, we discuss traditional way of collecting data, uh, going in the field and uh, collecting water level data, discharge uh, measurements and all that. But there are all kinds of other data sources uh, that may play a role. And I, I would also want to uh, think, since we have people from our colleague, uh, from Ministry of Water and Environment here, is uh, data is always a, a national security issue. How does this uh, openness, uh, open source data, or making public data available, uh, read in that national security issues uh, for data sharing or information product? Thank you. Thanks. Can uh, David, David, please go ahead and respond to the 
hands and one another another chat and another question in the chat from Thomas. Please go ahead, David. Okay, thank you, uh, moderator, and thank you for thank you, colleague, meaning those who have asked their questions. I will begin with the last one who has talked about the the, 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 the new developments in technological development and then also the issue of uh, security, data security. Now, the first one is uh, technological wise, of course, we cannot avoid modernization. But even with the modernization, we always have some level of, uh, of reservations. Or, or like, for example, we already have the, the automated systems in some places, not everywhere, but at least some automated system are in place. So, but they, we still use the all the 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 the, the, the water level, for example, to be able to calibrate uh, the function, the, the calibrate the what the, the the automatic system. So, much as of course we are moving towards the automatic, so the current technology, we will still need uh, the, the the support from uh, the, those traditional uh, information that will be also inform and 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 kind of act as a, a, a verification. Uh, on, on what the, 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 the current technology is moving. And for sure, yes, we are definitely getting there because if you don't modernize, definitely you may remain behind. But the principles in most cases, even if you modernize, you find that the, the, the working principles uh, do not change much. The, the, the basic, the concepts remains, even for measurements remains, but it's only the, the, the approach or the methodology that kind of a, a I mean, it changes a little bit. Like, like, for example, if I give you an example, we are using the acoustic Doppler current profilers for discharge measurements, but the principle of working is more of like a current meter, which was the first equipment that we are using. The, the working principle is the same, but it's only the the, 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 the technology, the, the way of doing things that is changing, but the principles kind of remain the same. Now, when it comes to to, to and, and yes, modernization, we can't avoid this. And we always look for all sorts of technologies to solve the problem anyway. Uh, security wise, yes, uh, this it could be a security problem, yes. But but you see, in most cases, we are looking at the information which may not necessarily be uh, the, the, the raw data that we have already done something on this data and we have maybe analyzed and we have come up with maybe a graph or something. This is good information that can very, very easily be shared. And uh, then also we look into uh, that sensitive information. Of course, not all information may be so, so sensitive. Like if we have information, for example, in Lake Victoria, this is a, a shared water resource that perhaps we need to be open enough and say, okay, we all understand it so that everybody appreciates and those who do potentially cause problems once they see reality, then they may not uh, they may not cause problems. So, yes, the security aspect is there, but of course during the 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 the, the, the working, one has you know to identify those uh, sensitive areas and then uh, work accordingly. But in most cases, the information that is shared will be products, and and the products of course you have to have them because otherwise. If you don't have these products and show what is coming out of them, then, then nobody will know what you are doing. So you have to have a product that you sell to the public and then they appreciate what is coming out. Yeah, so the, the other one is on what is the preventing us from okay, giving us, giving us, giving open data source, yes, one, the, 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 the previous caller has already talked or raised concerns about security issues. Maybe that is one of the reasons. And then the other one, of course, there is the policy framework and regulations. There, there is a way we do things, uh, or the way the government does things, there are policies, and these don't change overnight. You need time to review and, and do the right thing. So I'm, I'm sure the right thing will be done at the right time and uh, sooner or later. Uh, we will get there. Thank you. David, there is another hand that is coming from Dr. Kalist. Dr. Kalist, please, you can go and ask, I can go and supplement or contribute to David's presentation. Or we shall also look at the chat later. 
Thank you, sir. Go yeah. ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Gwendolyn. I, I just uh, want to thank the people who have raised the, some questions, <laughs> comments. I just wanted to provide additional information to what the colleagues have highlighted, also responding to some of the issues. Uh, one of the things I think uh, that was used is how are we really taking advantage of innovative data correction management technologies, artificial intelligence, remote sensing, GIS, and all of that. We are actually embracing it. And within the framework of the water and environment information system, we are trying to ensure that we get data from as many sources as possible. Uh, we are working with some partners to build the capacity of the country. In particular, we are working with the International Water Management Institute that is uh, building capacity of the various countries in East African region in use of these innovative technologies. So again, we'll be taking them up very soon and ensure that you leverage on available sources of data so that it supplements the data that is being collected in the country. But of course, we are also automating, as David mentioned, so that we can get data very fast for decision making. We are also trying to ensure that you get data from different sources. We have realized data is scattered. In some situations we may say we don't have data, but data is available somewhere. How do we work, for example, with the researchers who are doing masters, PhD, some are doing academic research? Where is that data? And how can we make sure that it is put in a central data and information system so that it is accessed by Ugandans? We have uh, the different organizations collecting data, the private sector. So the idea is that we try to put all this data together and we want to focus on changing, turning data into information for decision making. We do note that some organizations actually are not interested in data, although sometimes they come asking for data, but do they need data or they want information? So that's why we would want to make sure that we give people what actually we'd help them not what they feel they need. So we, we, under the Water and Environment Information System, again, we are trying, we are integrating all the databases. We had many databases in the ministry. All of them are being integrated so that we can all speak from the same page. We are also linking up with the NITA. We are looking to end up with UBOS, with the URA and others so that we are able to exchange data and information as appropriate so that we don't always have to look for data every time we want to do work. We have also ensured that our regional offices, the Ministry has six regional offices, wherever you will be, you will be able to go into the water and environment information system and check what is available. There will be user rights, and we also have a metadata base. Even as a user outside, you should go to the water and environment information system and check what data is available and be able to ask for what you need, but also you know what information products are there. So again, we are innovating, we are changing because we realize that we have not taken advantage of the available data to inform decisions. And that's why for us, the water and environment information system is key, but of course, continue, it has to continue getting data from, uh, from different sources. So the open data sources, yes, very, very important. Now, in terms of um, data being, of course, of security concern, we have, of course, data sharing protocols. Doesn't mean that every data is shared. This data maybe which is of uh, security concern of, maybe you cannot share widely, but there's data that you can actually give out to people. So again, there will be rights. There may be data that you can't share. For example, according to Otaro, if, for example, you have uh, issued a water permit to a user, the law requires that you protect the information about the water user and you don't that we are losing you excuse me sir we are losing you it's not your link Members, are you listening to us? Are you getting us? Members? David, are you hearing me? Yes, yes. For me, I can hear you. 
Can hear you are losing. We have lost Dr. Kalis, but I think he will come back and finalize what he was suggesting, what he was proposing, what he was supplementing on data management and data sourcing using the water and information, water and environment information system. At least uh, Isaac, for him, he has checked on it and I could see Isaac's comment. Okay, okay. While, while, yeah. I, while I wait for Dr. Kalis to come back. Isaac, yes, uh, Madam Gwendolyn. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, doctor is offline. He has got internet challenges, but he'll be back. But he said you can take over for now. Okay, that's fine. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Can we have some other questions as I read through the information in the chat? Doctor has come back. Doctor Kalis, since you're back, can you? Is it okay to continue with what you are giving us or the supplementary you are telling us, sir? I can see you back online. Dr. Kais, are you hearing us? Not yet. Let me read what is in the chat. Kudom Mwe, I just checked out the WEIS, that is Water and Environment Information System website. This is really fantastic. Thank you for this, Maximo. The data summarizes uh, the sum, the data summaries are excellent, and I pro I hope we can have access to the raw data for modeling purposes. Then there was another chat. This was just a thank you. Another chat said, "Great to Maximo, great to hear Maximo mention efforts being made towards calculating." I think it's the same thing. That, is yes, doctor, I, can when, you come back? Yes, I you went off. Yeah, you I went didn't know that. So I was talking, not knowing that I was talking to myself. So, okay, but just to complete what I was saying, mm. yeah, just to inform the team that we are really giving more attention to issues of data collection, data management for decision making. And so we'd want to request all of you to join us because you can have an information system, but the data has to be there. So let's get the data from different sources. And that's why we are collaborating with academia so that we get all that data, all that information that is collected so that it can be entered into our water and environment information system. So we are also trying to make sure that when one is needs the data, it becomes easier. And that's why under the water and environment information system, you will be able to go to the system and check what data is available and order for that data. You do not have to travel to look for the data and then you will get a notification when the data is available for you to, to, to actually get it. And some of the data will also be sent to people online. So it's a development we are having, it's changing the status quo, it's also changing people's attitude, and we would want you to be part of this agenda so that we can improve the way we are doing things for the good of the country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karis, for the supplement. Thank you for highlighting what the Minister of Water is doing and how far we've gone. And I think we are there. We are, we are there. We are about being, we are, maybe we are just about one kilometer less to get to where we, are, we want to be. But we are there. Thanks a lot for this. I don't know whether David, you have got a, a, a remarks so that we can conclude this presentation as we allow other people to go and do their other activities. David, before we close, thank you. Uh, thank you, moderator, and thank you for having moderated the, the session. And uh, I am I'm, I'm grateful for all everybody who has attended this uh, uh, this uh, webinar and uh, the ideas and the, 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 the compliments and this and the the questions they have raised. It is kind of a experience sharing, and uh, I think from now onwards we could, we could see ways of doing things better. But we're already moving, so I thank everybody for for having listened and attended this webinar. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, David. Thank you, everybody that uh, joined us today in this 17th webinar series of the Water Resources Institute, means Water and Environment. As earlier, when they're opening, they say we always have webinar series that are always presented at the last Friday of the month. But in case we have more, we shall maybe in future, we shall increase the frequency per month, maybe to two, 
times per month, but currently we are taking it for one per month and we always have it at the last Friday of the month. Members, we also, also are being attracted, being called on. If you have any paper to present, if you have got any research, it can be practical, it can be practice, can be scientific, can be policy that are related to water, environment and climate change and other sector prayers, or maybe it can be on financing, it can be on economy, it can be on stakeholder involvement, that all impact on to the water and environment. Please reach us, our contact, I think uh, Francis will share the contact where you can send us your expression of interest so that you can capture what you want to present to us and then we'll be able to get you a, a schedule and get your slot where you can present your findings, your study, your research. Those who have been participating in this, we want to thank you so much. Those who are participating as presenters, those who have been participating as listeners and as participants, want to thank you so much. Please keep on, whenever I call on you, come on air and listen in, because there is a lot to learn from this webinar series. Otherwise, I want to wish you a blessed weekend. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, you. Water Resources Institute. <coughs> thank you, thank you and bye everyone. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. Bye.